How's it going everybody? It's the Phantom Michael here and we have a Pokemon theory video for you today. Today's topic, if you haven't already noticed by the title of the video, we're going to talk about how children made the entries for the Pokedex. Now, when we think of Pokemon professors, we think of highly respected scholars of research in Pokemon biology. The professors in the Pokemon world have studied Pokemon for most of their lives and take pride in new discoveries. These professors have decided to task children to go throughout the region as field researchers to fill in the Pokedex pages with interesting things they discover about the Pokemon they encounter. The problem with using children as researchers is children tend to exaggerate what they witness. Uh, don't take my word for it. For example, uh, the Pokedex entry from Pokemon Sapphire reads, Magcargo's body temperature is approximately 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Water is vaporized on contact. If this Pokemon is caught in the rain, the raindrops instantly turn into steam, cloaking the area in a thick fog. I think we all can agree that a well-respected professor would never assume that Magcargo's body could ever be that hot. Even getting close to something that hot would have dire consequences. Instead, it makes more sense to me that a child spotted a Mad Cargo and walked right up to it. Mad Cargo being so slow couldn't get away from the child, and as a result, the child got too close and got burned by Mad Cargo's flames. Uh, the child only, you know, explained that it was that hot because he got burned. Like, what? What else would you expect the child to do? He freaked out. He got burned and said, "Oh my gosh, it was so hot." It, I think it had to be 18,000 degrees. To me, that makes a lot more sense than a well-respected researcher filled with wisdom and knowledge just assuming that this Pokemon was 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Another example of these exaggerations that we find in the Pokedex are from Yellow, specifically about Machamp. Uh, one arm alone can move mountains, using all four arms as Pokemon fires off awesome punches. Once again, similar with the previous entry, no scholar would just say, you know, Machamp can move a mountain and its forearm punches are awesome. You know, maybe Gigantamax form, but that you know, that might be a different video. So again, even with this one, um, I have never met a professor that used the word awesome in like research notes, um, as well as just, you know, the insanity that a Pokemon could push over a mountain like literally the entire Pokemon world would be destroyed if these creatures were that powerful um, so I think it once again I think it's a, another example of a child witnessing something amazing that this Pokemon could do and that is what made them assume oh my goodness this thing can move mountains its forearm punches are so cool they're awesome so to me that makes more sense the last example I can provide in the spirit of Halloween is Drifloon. A heart gold and soul silver entry says, it is whispered that any child who mistakes Drifloon for a balloon and holds onto it could wind up missing. So, you know, for me, I can imagine a group of children playing on a playground and them telling scary stories of how, oh, hey, I have a friend that knew someone that knew someone else that was taken away by Drifloon. He walked right up thought it was a balloon when he grabbed onto the balloon he was taken away and you know just like scary stories like that I think you know might have been what fueled this whole theory here um you know I'm sure that if this was true the parents of the Pokemon world would be like oh my gosh we gotta get you know this thing is taking kids away this is crazy they would outlaw Drifloons they would hunt them down because they're taking their children away I mean I'm not saying that you know the Pokemon parents are you know anything to you know, call on home about, but, uh, you know, I mean, they do let 10 year olds travel around gigantic regions by themselves, but that's another story. But just like I mentioned, once again, we can all agree that a professor wouldn't document this in a scientific encyclopedia unless they had proof. Like you're going to need proof that Machamp can move a mountain with one hand to write this down in something that is going to be taken literal. You're, you're going to need proof that, Hey, Kids, if you touch that balloon Pokemon, it could take you away and you'll never be seen again. As well as Mad Cargo being 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit, that would be disastrous. So once again, 
I do believe that the Pokedex was actually officially filled out by children, and that is why we see some of these Pokedex entries that are so preposterous and so just so far out there that are just outside the realm of, you know, even common sense, you know, coming from an adult's standpoint, even, you know, that we would never be like, oh my goodness, like, there's no way that this thing could actually be that hot. There's no way that this Pokemon can push a mountain. There's no way that, you know, we're going to let these Pokemon fly away with our kids. So, again, uh, that's the research that I did for this video. I would love, love, love to have someone else, you know, take a look at, you know, just this thought and to uh, see how interesting that they find this theory that um, I believe that children are the ones who filled out the, the Pokedex originally. I think Professor Oak handed over these Pokedexes and, you know, told the children, hey, go out there, look at these Pokemon and any interesting things you find, you know, write them down in the journal and we can use them. And that's how we got all these far out there comments about Pokemon. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy this theory, please smash that like button. Support is always greatly appreciated. But with that, everybody, I have been the Phantom Michael. I'm going to get the heck out of here. I will see you guys in the next one.